Hi everyone. Welcome to Farm De Guru. Today we'll be discussing an important topic in clinical pharmacokinetics and pharmacotherapeutic drug monitoring. Conversion from intravenous to oral dosing. Let's dive right in. When a patient is admitted to the hospital with conditions like acute pancreatitis, dengue, or typhoid, they're often initially treated with IV infusions. Why? Because in severe conditions, IV infusions ensure that the drug reaches the systemic circulation quickly and with 100% bioavailability, meaning there's no loss of the drug during absorption. Once the patient's condition stabilizes, we typically transition them from IV to oral medications. This which happens because oral medications are non-invasive, more comfortable for the patient and suitable for ongoing therapy. But here's the main challenge. How do we determine the right oral dose and frequency? Let me clarify an important concept. 40 mg of pantoprazole IV is not the same as 40 mg of pantoprazole given orally. Why? When a drug is given intravenously, IV, it directly enters the bloodstream and is immediately 100% bioavailable. On the other hand, when you take the same drug orally, it passes through the gastrointestinal tract and the liver, a process called first-pass metabolism, which reduces the amount of drug that actually reaches the bloodstream. For pantoprazole, the oral bioavailability is around 77% under normal conditions. This means only 77% of the oral dose gets into the bloodstream. Therefore, 40 mg IV delivers a higher effective dose than 40 mg taken orally. So, if you're converting a patient from IV pantoprazole to oral, you might need to adjust the oral dose to ensure the patient gets the same therapeutic effect. When switching to oral dosing, we need to ensure that the drug's plasma concentration stays consistent, especially for critical drugs. This requires understanding key concepts like steady-state concentration and bioavailability. Let's start with steady-state concentration. If we are giving an IV infusion to a patient, the patient's plasma drug concentration versus time graph looks like this. Initially, the plasma drug concentration starts at zero. As the infusion begins, the drug enters the body and the concentration rises steadily until it reaches a peak. In this case, it peaks at 0.34 micrograms per ml. After reaching the peak, the drug starts to eliminate from the body, and the concentration gradually declines. Now, let's view this process from another perspective. At the beginning, the input, drug infusion, starts, and there is no output, elimination. Remember, input is equal to drug absorption or IV infusion whereas output is equal to drug elimination. As time progresses, the input continues, but elimination starts to kick in. For example, at peak concentration, the input is 100 arbitrary units and output is zero. The output is about to begin. After some time, the input is 95 and the output becomes 5. Later, input reduces to 65 and output increases to 35. At a specific point, the input and output become equal. Example, input is equal to 50 and output is equal to 50. This is the point where a plateau is reached called the steady state concentration, CSS. At steady state, input, absorption or drug infusion rate equals output, elimination rate. At this point, plasma drug concentration remains constant because the rate of drug entering the system matches the rate of drug leaving. Because IV infusions has no dosing intervals, we can observe a steady state concentration. But if you take IV injections or oral medications like tablets or capsules, we have dosing intervals. Like, for example, when a doctor prescribed oral medication like aspirin, BD, the patient will take it morning and evening. Because there are long gap between morning and evening, we cannot observe steady levels. Like IV infusions, Instead, we observe a lot of peaks and troughs in their graph. So, those medications having no dosing interval, like IV infusions, we can get steady-state concentration from graph. But for those drugs, which has dosing intervals like oral medications, instead of CSS, we use CAV, which is called average steady-state concentration. In short, CSS for continuous IV infusions, whereas CAV for dosing intervals, example, oral medications and injections. Observe these two graph. This graph is IV infusions graph. Here continuity is present and we can use CSS. Now, look at this graph. 
This is a graph of oral medication which has dosing interval. We can observe fluctuations like peaks and troughs. Hence, we cannot use CSS, we use CAV. Now, let's look at average steady state concentration, CAV. Unlike CSS, which describes the steady plateau during continuous infusion or the stable range during repeated dosing. CAV represents the average drug concentration in plasma over a dosing interval. For example, let's say we're giving a drug orally. The plasma drug concentration rises to a peak of 20 micrograms per ml after each dose, then falls to a trough of 12 micrograms per ml before the next dose. These ups and downs are normal for oral dosing due to absorption and elimination. To simplify this fluctuation, we calculate the average concentration during the dosing interval. In this case, the CAV might be around 15 micrograms per ml, representing the balance between the high, peaks, and low troughs. So, CAV is like the average of the highs and lows during repeated dosing. It gives us a single value to represent drug exposure over time. Now, let's focus on second key concept, bioavailability. When switching from IV to oral, we must account for bioavailability, which is the fraction of the oral dose that reaches systemic circulation. For IV drugs, F is equal to 1, 100% is absorbed. For oral drugs, F is less than 1, because some of the drug is lost due to factors like poor absorption or first-pass metabolism. Now the main question. How to convert IV to oral dosing? We can convert by using two methods. First one is a simple method, and the other is pharmacokinetic method. For simple method, we use this formula to convert IV to oral dose. Whereas in pharmacokinetic method, we use this formula for conversion. If we don't know a lot of pharmacokinetic parameters, and the drug we are converting is a simple antibiotic or antihistamine, we can use simple method. Whereas, if we know a lot of pharmacokinetic parameters, and the drug we are converting is a narrow therapeutic index drug, we must use pharmacokinetic method. Let's see how calculation done in simple method. As I said, this is the formula. Let's say we are giving a drug A to a patient and the patient got stabilized and doctor decided to shift from IV to oral. Now, what should be the oral dose? We already know IV dose. That is 500 milligrams. Now, let's apply these to our formula. Oral dose is equal to IV dose. We know it's 500 milligrams divided by bioavailability. How can we get bioavailability of this drug A? For bioavailability, we simply refer official book like Indian Pharmacopoeia and search for this drug AS monograph. It contains all information about this drug. We note down the bioavailability and apply to the formula. Suppose we searched the monograph and it shows the bioavailability of this drug A is 80%. Hence, we can write it as 0.8. If it's 70%, then F is 0.7. Here F is 0.8 and we know IV dose 500 milligrams. Then by applying them to formula, we get 625 milligrams. So we can prescribe 625 milligrams of oral medication to get the same effect. Now let's see the pharmacokinetic method. And this is the formula for that. Here we need to calculate all these parameters and finally apply to the formula. Let's say we calculated all these parameters and apply it to formula, then we can get an answer like this. 450 mg of drug A for every 12 hours. This method is generally used for narrow therapeutic index drugs in critical conditions for most accurate doses. Now the key factors to consider are when switching from IV to oral dosing. Start oral dosing when IV stops to ensure seamless drug levels. Monitor plasma drug levels especially for drugs with narrow therapeutic ranges like warfarin or phenytoin. What happens if the bioavailability is very low? If F is very low, the oral dose will need to be much higher than the IV dose to achieve the same effect. This is why bioavailability is a critical factor when converting doses. Well, that's how IV dose is converted to an oral dose. Here is an another example for you.